Hi, welcome back to Maker's Hangout. We're in the shop today, and I know it looks like we're doing a cooking show, but we're really not. Um, I had a lot of folks interested in how we make our cutting board finishes, and we thought we would kind of go over that process today for those of you that don't know how to do that. Uh, we make a lot of cutting boards and a lot of charcuterie boards and stuff for gifts and at the markets and we go through a lot of oil uh, getting those boards just right. And we were buying a lot of the store-bought products that many of you all buy. Here's something by Howard Speed & Wax. It's really good. Here's a base wooden bamboo conditioner. And all these products work really well. The problem that I'm running into lately is some stores are out of it and it's gotten really, really expensive. And there's a better way to do this. Um, so what we do is we make our own. We actually market and sell this to our customers. And sometimes if they buy a high-end product, we will give them uh, one of the tins of board butter that we're getting ready to make here in just a second. So it starts off, there's only two ingredients. It's beeswax. Uh, we'll put a link down below on where we get this stuff and then we use mineral oil. Now I mentioned we go through a lot of products so when we buy mineral oil you can buy it in, in the little bottles at your pharmacy or at Walmart or some places like that. We actually buy five gallons at a time because we go through a lot of it so I'll leave a link if you're getting into making a lot I'll leave a link otherwise uh, you can get it about anywhere in the smaller bottles. So the mixture would be a half of this bag to four 16 ounce bottles of mineral oil. So it's basically a four to one ratio when you're mixing this stuff. Got a little hot pad here, and uh, we're gonna start off by getting our wax melted. It's better to melt the wax and get a measurement via liquid um, than it is to try to measure it when it's dry. So we're gonna melt some wax first. We do this through a process called a double boiler system, where we have this, and we set this in a pan of water. It's sitting here, coming up to boil them out, and uh, that way it won't scorch and stick to the bottom of the pot. I got this uh, double boiler pan uh, on Amazon, and it works really well because it pours really nice. So we set that down in the water, and it kind of floats there. Just kind of balance it on the side, and uh, we'll start melting this wax and getting it to where we can do something with it. So one of the things you can be doing while you're waiting for that to melt is getting your cans or your tins ready to put it in. Um, we sell our board butter in these four ounce tins. Um, we print labels up for them. So I'm gonna get some tins ready because I have no idea how many of this is gonna make. I should be more scientific about this. Um, but sometimes you just gotta get in it and get started. So I like to have a, a glass container to put board butter in. If I have a little bit left over, I can dump it in here and I use that here in the shop. So I always keep one of them handy because um, I'm gonna use it anyway. There's no sense in using up my cans. So our board butter, we put a label on it. I'll put a link down below where we get these. So we print these on our laser printer. And uh, when we sell them at the market, you can see I've actually used out of this tin, but it, when we're all done, we get this paste-like consistency that's kind of white. Kind of resembles car wax. The wax is what's going to give you the protectant on your boards. The mineral oil is going to soak in. Um, the wax puts some more oil in it and then it puts a protective layer on top that helps shed moisture and stuff from your boards. When we first do cutting boards or charcuterie boards, we actually coat them in straight mineral oil first to get it really soaked in good. And then after we're done engraving it or after it's had a chance to dry, then we'll go back with this board butter as the final cut. So we have four ounces in measure cup. And since it's four to one, we'll take this up to 16. Now this finish doesn't give you a hard protective finish like some kinds of two-part lacquers will. Um, you're not going to want to do a dining room table with this stuff, but anything you need to be food safe, this is 100% food safe. So it can be used on cutting boards, wooden spoons, those kinds of things. And to me, it gives the wood just a beautiful luster and lets the, the beauty of the wood come out. So I really enjoy working with it. So I've had some folks ask, why don't we use vegetable oil or coconut oil on our boards? And that's a good question. Anything that has fat in it has the potential of going rancid. 
So we try to avoid them completely. Uh, Carnival wax is another wax you can put in this instead of beeswax. Um, all my research showed that it's a little more expensive and the beeswax works perfectly, so that's what we use here. Going to start pouring. We'll see where we get to here. If you're a woodworker and want to do this yourself, there's all kinds of options for tins out there. There's two ounce and four ounce and I think eight ounce tins. Uh, you can get them in black, you can get them in different colors. All right, we're there, so let's start pouring. Have a container you can pour out of, because this stuff's hot really important. You don't want to splash it all over the side of your can. I mentioned before, I'll take a last jar with what I have left. That's what I'm going to use here in the shop. And I will pour that dude in there to use up the remaining that I don't have cans for. So next, I've already got mineral oil on these boards. I started with them and they clean up better if I mineral oil them first. But when you hit them with the alcohol, it does dull a little bit and they're not really protected yet. So I like to put some board butter on them. It works from us, so we'll give them a tin or two of it. But it goes on kind of like car wax. And uh, we just like to get it on there, plenty liberal, and uh, getting it soaking in there good. It's already got a good coat of mineral oil on it. Uh, this is beeswax mineral oil, so the wax helps protect it and uh, really gives it a, a nice finish. And it's easy if they mess the board up or whatever, it's real easy to repair this kind of finish because you can hit it with a little light sandpaper. And, reapply as good as new just rub it in good like you're waxing your car you got good lighting you can tell if you've missed a spot somewhere or take a desk lamp or a flashlight or something and just kind of shine down it if you if you don't have good light where you're doing this. This piece of wood, we've had several people ask about this wood too. I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about this wood. This is some two or 300 year old mahogany that was out of a sinker log that was pulled up by the rivers in Belize. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have a lumber supplier here locally that actually is, owns a company that pulls those logs. And uh, they sell a lot of wood to guitar companies. And so we buy some of the offcuts and stuff that won't quite make the, the cut for a guitar company make gorgeous project boards for us. So we are very fortunate to have them here. It's hard to buy wood that's this pretty anymore. This is old growth mahogany. Okay, we're gonna let that sit probably 20 to 30 minutes and let it soak in really good and then we'll come back and buff it off. They've been resting a while, so I got a lint free cloth here. Just gonna start wiping off the excess. That's a really 
pretty bored. pretty bored right there. So I also like to have just a glass container with a lid that, for the product that I use here in the shop. Thanks, Train. At 16 ounces of Right at 16. 